So, how would you like to be able to figure out anything just by listening to it a few times? Wouldn't that be cool? Well, in order to do that, you've got to learn to play by ear the smart way. And that involves this concept right here. All real musicians go through a program known as ear training. Ear training. Ever heard of it? Ever heard of ear training? Out of a hundred students a year that I have, I can generally only count on about a half a dozen people having ever even heard of ear training, yet alone know, knowing what it actually is. Um, those are the two most important words, as far as I'm concerned, that you're ever going to hear anybody say on the subject of music. If you want to be a real musician, you've got to get trained ears. And what does that mean? Well, what ear training is all about is about working out with a coach who already knows knows what these 50 different patterns sound like and you're given clues about what to listen for in order to get to the point where you can recognize what they actually sound like. All of these 50 patterns sound like something and they sound different from the other 49 patterns as surely as the word cat sounds different than the word dog. And with a certain amount of work, you can get to the point where you know what all of your 50 patterns sound like, and then it's not a matter of stumbling around trying to figure out what that song is. The stuff comes out of the speaker, and you're going, oh, I know that chord. Oh, I know that scale. Oh, I know that riff. Just like you're learning from me in the English language right now because I'm speaking to you, right? And you're going, oh, I know that word. Oh, I know that word. Oh, I know that word. Oh, I know what this guy's trying to say. Imagine if you could do the same thing with music. You put the disc in, hit the play button. Oh, I know that chord. Oh, I know that riff. And then the only thing finally that you have to know then is you have to know the finger patterns so that you can play that stuff yourself. And let's do a quick segue in down here into the fourth way. Let's get this one out of the way. We're going to come back and talk some more about ear training in a minute, but ju just because of what I just said right there, you've got to be able to think in the language. You've got to be able to read in the language. You've got to be able to hear in the language. But finally, the last thing is you have to be able to turn around and you have to be able to make that noise yourself, don't you? You have to be able to speak in the language. And there it is, the four ways to know your pitch patterns. Think them, read them, hear them, speak them. Isn't that true? You can do that with any word in the English language, can't, can't you? Over your course of your music career, you've got to get better and better at doing your pitch patterns, your scales and your chords and everything, these same four ways. Now, you're going, speak? Wait a minute, I'm a guitar player. What's that got to do? Speak? What do you mean? Well, um, this is number four down here, the fourth way that you have to know your patterns in any languages, you have to be able to speak them. Now this one's a little abstract. L let me suggest that whenever you speak in a language, you use some kind of machine. Like it might be blah, 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 this machine right there. That's a machine, isn't it? And somebody had to teach you how to use that machine. Or maybe it's a, a typewriter, like we said before. You use the typewriter to speak for you. Or maybe you use sign language and you know how to sign. You use your hand as the machine to speak with. Well, it's just in music, we use one of these kinds of machines to speak with. And particularly since you're here to learn how to play the guitar, let me suggest that the way that you learn to make your machine speak for you is you learn how to manipulate the machine with your fingers. The fourth way that you need to know your scales and your chords and everything is you have to know them as finger patterns. And, you know, that's what an awful lot of people think that's all there is to playing the guitar, is learning more and more of these different finger patterns. That, in many of you, that, that's the way that you've been doing it so far. You've been buying these chord books and stuff, and you've been learning where to put your fingers and all. But that's really not where it's, where it's at, you know what I mean, in the language. That, that's just like the typing part of the language. You know, but as we said before, the typewriter doesn't write the book, does it? You write the book with the command of the language in your mind. But then, yes, you've got to know about your fingers patterns, too, in order to make your machine speak for you. You have a lot of practicing to do. You're going to have plenty of exercises and scales and, and stuff that you're going to need to learn how to play on your guitar. That's the finger pattern stuff. That's speaking in the language. But let's go back up here. We got to finish up our thoughts on this ear training. Remember I said this is the two most important words you'll ever hear me say. Most people have never even heard of ear training. And that's so weird, once again, because, you know, like I say, there, there's like real musicians and then there's people that are just kind of like pretend musicians. Um, now I'm not saying you have to go to music school to be a real musician, but it sure as heck doesn't, doesn't 
doesn't hurt. And of course, to go to music school, you've got to read. And and the other thing that people don't understand is ear training. Most of us who have never even heard of ear training, ear training is the second required course at music school. And, and it's so funny that most people have never even heard of it. Ear training is the second required course at music school, right behind music theory. Everybody seems to understand that, that they're going to go to music theory class and learn about those alphabet letters and those sharps and flats and all the conceptual stuff about music. What so few people understand is probably around 11 o'clock, your theory course is going to be dismissed, and you're going to go down to room 204, and that's going to be the ear training lab. And you're going to spend uh, several hours in there with your ear training coach. Now, get yourself trained ears, and here's all the amazing things that will open up for you. First of all, you will be able to listen learn. That is, any song you want to play, you'll just be able to listen to it a few times and, and you'll figure out how to play it. Now, it's a skill that takes some time to acquire, but, but if you work at it, uh, you'll be able to do it. The second thing you'll be able to do is you'll be able to compose music. Everybody wants to know how to write songs. Well, the, the best way, there's, a, there's people who, who don't really have trained ears, although I shouldn't say that because everybody in this modern era has trained ears to a certain degree because the mere act of listening to music is actually a form of ear training. Um, but if you ever really want to get to the point th th that you can uh, uh, compose your own music, uh, you really have to get your ears trained. And, and we'll be talking about that more as the program goes on. Finally, the third thing, and one of the coolest things that you'll be able to do if you get trained ears, is you'll be able to improvise. People go, really? And I go, yeah, that's com almost completely where improvisation comes from. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. But, but before I do, let me g give you a couple of little more examples of how ear training works. Um, ear training, as I said, is you work out with a coach who gives you clues about how to recognize what these different patterns sound like. Remember I said they all sound different from, an, from one another, just like the word cat sounds different than the word dog. And I'll give you your first example of that right, uh, right now so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you've got these 20 different chords that you have to learn, and, and you have to learn them four different ways. Think them, read them, hear them, speak them. you got to learn what they sound like. You've got to recognize them by ear. Here's your first little ear training clue. There's a lot of different types of chords, but I'm oversimplifying a bit, but they all seem to fall into one category or another. There's all these old uh, other, there's all these chords over here that are called major chords. Some of you already know about this. And there's these other chords over here that are called minor chords. How do you tell by ear the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? There's a lot of subtle things that you listen for about the various notes that are in them, in, in other words, in, in other things like that. But one really cool thing to realize is that they just sound different and they make you feel differently. Here's your first clue for recognizing the difference between major chords and minor chords. Most people would agree that major chords sound happy and minor chords sound sad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scotty West, creator of the Absolutely Understand Guitar Video Home Study Program. Hey, thanks for all the positive feedback on our video guitar lessons. We're now uploading new lessons right from our DVD Home Study Program. Each lesson is 70 minutes long, but we've chopped them up into 10-minute chapters to fit on YouTube, so each lesson will have seven chapters. It's critical that you watch these chapters in order. Make sure you start with Lesson 1, Chapter 1, then move to Lesson 1, Chapter 2, etc. When you've finished all the chapters for Lesson 1, then move on to Lesson 2. Hey, some of this stuff you might already know, and some of it's a little dry. You're going to wonder, do I really need to know this stuff? The answer is yes. Each one of these chapters contains little gems of information that nobody's told you yet, and these are the missing pieces that are preventing you from seeing the big picture. Don't cheat yourself out of these valuable realizations. Stick with the program. Also, consider our complete DVD home study program. Our high-resolution DVD video is much better than these fuzzy little YouTube clips, and you'll also get all our cool printed material, too. So good luck with your music and enjoy the lessons.